what's up guys this is jeff from online cubase tutorials back again for some more edm production tips and techniques and in the last video i said i was gonna uh, make a like a drum fill uh for this drop and we will get to that but i think um there's one thing that i looked up and i i wanted to share it with you you can find this also on other um cubase tutorials online if you search for it specifically but um, we worked with this um this arpeggiator um, that we have uh, on the MIDI track. We, we are uh, using our Apache uh, SX right now um, to create this uh, this pattern. And you remember, basically, you just you hold down a bunch of notes, and then the arpeggiator is creating all this MIDI data. So if we if we will listen to this, okay. So it's, it's obviously it's playing more notes than just these three that you see here. And um, I wanted to show you a function. Um, if you want to generate MIDI that the arpeggiator is playing, you can hold the control key down and right click and you come down to MIDI, merge MIDI and loop, and include inserts. And that'll include the inserts that's generating MIDI. And if you say OK, you're like, hey, look at what happened here. So you can open up this part now and you see here's all the MIDI data that got created from that. So you can see um, if you want to be able to edit. Now this part is like generated. It's sitting on top of this um, this one. So you don't you wouldn't want to actually put the arpeggiator on the arpeggiator itself. So it's kind of one of those things where if you want to render your MIDI parts, then you'd need to put this on another track. If I if I do a duplicate track and then select all events and delete and then remove the inserts on the second one there so now you can see basically this will do the exact same thing so in this version here on this track it's going to generate the MIDI data with the arpeggi with the arpeggiator and on this track it'll generate the MIDI that's burned into this track, burned into this uh, kind of like rendered, basically. So that's how you convert Arpeggiator to MIDI data. And now you can, you know, send this MIDI data to another track. You can edit it. Like for for one thing I, I was thinking about doing was kind of cleaning it up a little bit. Because I don't know why those long notes are there. Um, so, so this gives you a chance to actually see the generated MIDI data and edit it. So you can, you know, use that creatively. And so as another example, um, you know, we could come in here on this track and, and choose a different, a different uh, arpeggiator, like the down one. And um, do that function again. MIDI, merge MIDI and loop. And where did it go? I guess it's right there. Actually, let's make sure we have the right one here. I think you might have to have set the loop as well. Let's do that one more time. Now you can see by doing that, we have this part here. So it's two completely different parts. Maybe not completely different, but so let's 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 uh, give that a listen. Let's see how different they are. Well, all right, <laughs> heard no sound. I guess we have to chart target the prologue. One more time here. Let's solo this. We'll listen to both of these. so many notes in here 
It didn't actually sound very good to me. You can try um, a whole bunch of different ones and just see what sounds the best. I'll come in here to um, the original track that we have. Go to the insert. Let's turn off this one. Turn this one back on. Use a simpler one. Down only 16th notes. Let's see what that does. MIDI. Merge MIDI and loop. That's weird. It got, um, it, it actually does use the loop setting. You can see that. So let's undo that. Let's make sure our loop is exactly the range that we want. So MIDI, merge MIDI and loop. Inserts, include inserts. Drag this down. Doesn't look super different. Let me take this out. No effect here. That's pretty cool. I'll take out those these long notes. I'm not exactly sure where that's coming from. Maybe throwing too much data at this thing. And you, know, you get different, all kinds of different effects just by uh, messing with this. And this is, what's interesting is this is actually being sent to a mono synth. So I don't think it's actually even playing most of these notes. It's just, it's interesting to see what um, is generated by the software. You can um, just do different experiments with it. Just removing some of these overlapping notes just to see how, how uh, different this is going to sound. All right, let's hear that with let's hear that with the rest of the stuff. It's pretty cool. So we can use that to our advantage and alternate. And now that I took off um just redo this whole this whole track now and um, we'll mute we'll just mute this part actually we'll leave some of these in here uh, we'll just mute it just do uh, do our normal technique this is like select all events and mute and now we just have this this prologue MIDI part We'll do two up up ones and two down ones. Just cleaning up, just cleaning that up a little bit. If I close these down now, we can see we have um, like alternating parts. In fact, we could do uh, we'll do an up down, up down. Let's see how that works. I kind of like it going across the break.
so you can see I was trying to mix up the volume a little bit, but it's actually reading the um, automation. It's reading the automation um, of the volume track here. So I'm just going to crank it up a little bit uh, by dragging these um, automation mix up and down. And then I need to bring some across here as well. And this is going to fade in and fade out. One other thing I was thinking would be cool on here is like a kind of an auto pan, like a slow auto pan. Um, so you can insert that here and you can uh, you just search. This is blinking right here. You can say, see a pan. There's a couple different panning ones. Um, I haven't used VSD multi panner, but I'll just do auto pan. You can see here is the the rate. You can sync it. It's like every measure will go left to right. Factor is one. It's set to a sine wave. Let's listen to that. Move this out of the way for a second. Sounds pretty cool. I was wondering why one out of one is the the slowest the slowest rate. It's a little too fast. I was hoping for something slower. So let's give that a listen on solo. We can hear it going back and forth. Just get that moving across the ears. All right, so I think in the next video, we'll uh, actually get to the, those drum fills. We'll fill into these breaks and uh, we'll make an exit and we'll get this thing mixed up, mastered up and uh, complete. Thanks for watching.